Greetings from Great Bear Island, where the air is crisp, the fresh snow sparkles, and strange glowing wolves are slowly circling your home. I am your host, Robert York, and I'll be taking you through the midnight hour to the early morning, or until the aurora finally flares out, whichever comes first. Before we get started, I'd like to let people know how to get to the disused bathroom that I am broadcasting from. First, go down the hallway. No, not literally down, just down. At the first intersection, turn left, then continue, then left again, then right, then hyper-right, then down. This time, literally down. The next part is tricky. If you follow the directions carefully and successfully navigated all four spatial dimensions, you should be in the hallway. The number on the door to the bathroom always changes. It's supposed to be a prime, but that's not much help since I never know what base the numbers are in. It's definitely not the door with screaming coming from it. Usually I just hope the toilet backs up and choose the door with a puddle under it but make sure it's a puddle of water. If you reach the moat, you've gone too far, and you will be missed. But don't forget the key. You'll need that. Not to unlock the door. It doesn't have a handle. You just push. But to deal with the logic puzzle involving three locked chests. Good luck. And now, clarification. There seems to have been a misunderstanding. This is a calling show, not a culling show. People call in with questions. You do not call in who you want called. Will all the wolves please stop spamming me? This has been Clarification. And now a political advertisement from Survivors for a Higher Minimum Rage. Hello, Survivors. Did you know that in the years since the apocalypse, rage disparity has increased dramatically? The difference in the amount of rage between your average apathetic survivor and the 1% has widened over 70%, despite the fact that inflation has increased the overall amount of rage by 260%. My fellow Survivors, too long have the 1% among us possessed all the outrage and indignity. People today are disillusioned and have given up any hope of becoming intolerant, tooth-gnashing firebrands of myopic opinions. If we are to have any hope of turning the apathetic children of today into the ranting blowhards of tomorrow, we will need to raise the federal minimum rage. Our detractors would speak about how raising the minimum rage hurts small businesses, how we need to reduce the minimum rage to remain competitive. What they don't want you to hear is their screams as we feed them to wolves and beat the survivors to death with lead pipes. So join us and ask to raise the minimum rage. Think about the children. Think about how lazy they are. Support Prop H8R. This has been a political advertisement from Survivors for a Higher Minimum Rage. And now, 
local news. An update on this morning's book drive. The book drive took a nasty turn when a copy of Friedrich Nietzsche's The Spokes Zarathustra got all ubermensch and challenged the herd alpha for control. The resulting stampede tore through Mystery Lake, causing widespread panic. A local wolf was quoted as saying, Wolf. Search parties are still looking for survivors. We're always looking for survivors. It's been over two years now. We haven't found a single other survivor. We will update you as soon as more details become available. This has been Local News. And now a word from our sponsor. A child at school. He is different. The others wait until the watchers are distracted. They surround him. They prey upon his fears. They melt away with the return of the watcher. He speaks of his tormentors. The watcher turns a blind eye. He is punished. He suffers in silence. He weeps into his pillow. He talks to his mirror. He carries with him emptiness. He does not know peace. He never forms a meaningful connection. He revels in the suffering of others. It is the only sense of control he will ever know. Until now. Nuts and stuff. Eat the sad away. This has been a word from our sponsor. And now, letters from the listeners. Dear Rob, the sludge keeps getting closer. What should I do? Sincerely, Hateful Sludge. Dear Hateful Sludge, thank you for your letter. Allow me to be the first to tell you you are not alone. Hateful Sludge is a real problem this time of year, what with the upcoming alignment. As we all know, hateful sludge is the physical manifestation of all the sins that can no longer be contained within your frail human form. You can expect for this sludge to continue to manifest until you take the following corrective measures. Molt. Now, I'm sure you tried the obvious first, but it never hurts to start at the beginning. Just to be sure, even if you've already molted, uh, do it again. Maybe you didn't do it right the first time. Feed a single potato chip to a cat. Again, I'm sure you tried this, but did you use an oven-baked Lay's original chip? The cat in question, was it a Russian blue properly crossbred with a Siamese so that its harsh vocalizations were pleasing to Ma'ai, the time shifter? You may have skipped this step, what with the high fatality rate of this remedy, but you really can't move on to more extreme solutions until you've tried the basics. Seek a professional. If you are still having problems, then clearly you've been learning too much forbidden knowledge. You awful, awful person. I'm afraid you've gone past ritualized cleansing and appeasement and need to seek the help of a professional. Such a professional will surely betray your trust and report you for the standing reward. So if you're a do-it-yourself handyman, or if you've run out of internal organs that can be harvested without perishing, you might want to try the following. Pretend to be someone else. Since the hateful sludge cannot see, this is fairly easy to do. Just talk loudly about how you are now leaving and never coming back, then stomp away. Return sometime later and speak in a different voice. Inform anyone who comes along that you are the new owners of your home. Ask everyone to loudly refer to you by a new name that begins with the letter M. Hateful Sludge finds words that begin with an M quite pleasing. However, any slip-up, and the Hateful Sludge will redouble its efforts. It may, in fact, make an alliance with the mildew festering in your shower grout. Normally, it would never consider such an act, but there are depths Hateful Sludge will sink to if it knows it has been tricked. So while this has been known to work, I cannot recommend it. Salt You might not actually have hateful sludge, but in fact, 
demonic effluent. It's a common mistake, for demonic effluent is actually quite rare. Sprinkle the offending substance with salt if it reacts by releasing a screech that triggers memories of crimes you have never committed. You got that effluent. This is easy to fix. Just search your home until you find your Metastophelian house guest. Usually he'll be hiding under a couch cushion or in your pillowcase. When you find him, just look stern and waggle a finger in a disapproving fashion while saying, Okay, you got me. You got me good. Your cloven-footed friend will then look sheepish and leave. Mint Enzyme Cleaner This stuff is amazing. It's got live bacterial cultures that break down offending organic material and physical manifestations of sin. Yet, it leaves behind a pine-fresh scent. Remember to alternate between spraying the enzyme and distilled water between scrubbings. It will take several days, but between enzyme and elbow grease, you should be able to clean up most minor outbreaks. Paint your house black. When all else fails, paint your entire house black, or replace your aluminum siding with any of the patterns available from the new Jackson Pollock collection. It's a last resort, but if you are going to continue to be a wretched mech screen that is truly unworthy of love, and you are on a budget, painting is the way to go. May I suggest you call up some friends and make a day of it? If any of your friends are still alive, that is. This has been Letters from the Listener. And so another day comes to a close. The sky starts to brighten in the south with the rising sun. As my night ends, your day begins, so I will leave you with this final thought. We as a culture romanticize the unstoppable survivor. The survivor who is knocked down only to rise up again. The survivor who wins by simply refusing to die. The reality of such an individual is not so cinematic. If life piles enough upon the back of a man, he will break, either in spirit or or in his mind. A man goes crazy when he gets to the point where he is surviving just to survive. No longer living, only existing. If you get good enough at enduring the trials and tribulations of existence, it becomes a primordial need manifested as psychosis. Yes, such a man could claw his way out of his own grave, but he cannot stop for even the most minor of injuries. He can never rest, for if he stops to heal, he will have to feel. Feeling is death to a man like that. You must always move forward. No matter how hard you are knocked down, you must get back up and keep going because of one simple belief. Things will never get any better. This is as good as it gets. But as terrible and as horrible as things may be, this is not truth, only conviction. Eventually, we all need to heal. Can you stop? Can you let it hurt? Because we glorify such survivors, no one will notice your pain. No one will help you. Because people try to become as broken as you are. The determinator. A force of nature. Just as strong. Just as petty as. And when your Sifafim task is finally at an end, in a dark windowless room you will sit, trapped alone with horrific truths, and missing friends. Just something to think about. Until next Aurora, keep surviving, survivors.